Hello, good people of the world. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. I appreciate you guys so much. So today we're gonna do something completely different than we, we've done it before. We have, never fear, I see some of you mid-century modern people cowering and saying, what is she gonna do? So we have this desk right here. I do have the center drawer. It's not assembled. Okay, so this is by Hooker Furniture. Yeah, funny name. So this is the main line by Hooker Furniture. This is a mid-century two-sided floating walnut executive desk, okay? And so we're going to restore this. This is my client's and so it has gone through quite a bit and we are going to restore, refinish this for her. Now, this is where you can find it online. It's worth, this company was selling it for around $2,100 and that's with it being refinished. So it's definitely not one of your more expensive mid-century modern pieces that you can find. Some of them are way more than that. And so we are going to refinish this all in walnut, a walnut stain by Ligno Color, and I'll show you guys that. It's a water-based stain. And I'm going to be sealing it with Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel Clear Coat, and we're gonna be using the satin so that it has a tiny bit of sheen, and that way it stays within the realm of this era and having kind of a sheen on top of everything. I am going to disassemble this a little bit. If you are not comfortable with disassembling and reassembling furniture, don't do it please. So I am a woodworker and I've restored many pieces and so I'm going to disassemble this just a little bit because I need to be able to get under here. This is really far back and to try to refinish that would be crazy. So I am going to take the top of this off very carefully and that way we can work in these cracks and crevices and properly restore it. We don't want to leave any areas. And so by me taking the top off, I am going to be able to get in all these areas and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. So we are going to be repairing this drawer. There is a drawer right here that has been repaired and has some brad nails in it. It's looking a little rough. I'm going to try to set those nails once we take this finish off, I'm gonna set them and try to match a wood filler that's gonna match our walnut stain that we're gonna use so that we can try to hide those a little bit more. But we are gonna be keeping the hardware and we're just going to try to refresh this and keep it going. And that's what we're gonna do, guys. So I hope you stick with me and learn a few things about refinishing. All right, stay here, guys. First thing I did was disassemble this desk. The reason why I disassembled it is because, like I said before in the clip before, there is little shelves underneath the top and so I need to be able to get to those and that way I can refinish this the best that I can. So I put all the screws and stuff like that in a little plastic jar and then what I did is I took the body of this piece, that's what we're gonna call this little part right here, the body of the piece, and I took that outside and we are gonna use a chemical stripper on this. So I put a chemical stripper on it so that way we could get the pre-existing finish off of here. There is a little lip right here, and so I took a 3M pad so that I could get, it's a curved surface, so I took a 3M pad so that way I could scrub that with the chemical stripper so that we could get the finish off of it. The next thing I did was take a metal scraper and I scraped the side of the piece, the side of the desk, 
And you want to make sure that this is flat to the surface so that way you're not causing any kind of damage. You also can use a plastic scraper if you want. I do use a plastic scraper very often, but I couldn't find it. So I used my metal scraper for this. Then what I do after I have scraped all of the stripper off of the side is I take a very fine triple zero steel wool and I go with the grain to get any of the residue off of there before I go in with mineral spirits. I use mineral spirits and fine steel wool and I go with the grain to get any of the residue off and that way this will get any of the residual stripper off and it also will stop the stripping process so it neutralizes the chemical stripper and so then what I'm going to do is after I do this part I'm going to allow it to completely dry before I go in and I start sanding. This is a walnut veneer and I want to be very careful with it. So I am taking a 120 grit and that's what I'm starting with. So when I am doing this, especially with mid-century modern furniture, I start with 120 grit and then I go up to a 180 grit and then I go up to a 220 grit. And that's generally what I do. If it was a an oak or something like that, I may start with an 80 grit, but I really want to make sure that I don't do any damage to this, especially because we're going to be refinishing it and restoring it. And so I want to make sure that I am very careful with it. So a 120 grit is what I do and I go with the grain. And you're going to see here in a second, I'm going to do that one shelf and the grain actually goes in a horizontal pattern and so that is why i'm taking my surf prep and i'm going in this pattern right here because again i'm going with the wood grain to get that final finish off Again, this is a walnut veneer, so I am taking walnut. The stain that I'm using is by Ligno Color, which is a company out of Germany. And this is a water-based stain, so you're gonna see how it's gonna lighten up over time when I'm putting this stain on. It just darkens back up once you put the sealer on. But this color is walnut, and so I'm going with the grain when I am applying this stain. I'm going to seal this with Wise Owl's one hour enamel top coat and this sheen is satin. I am going to do this by hand. I know that it is suggested, suggested to spray mid-century modern pieces, but I do this a lot and I'm using a Klingon brush, which is, which is high quality synthetic brush. And this top coat is really good at self-leveling and you're going to see that in a second here so again i'm going to go with the grain i'm going to do long strokes my final stroke 
on the top coat will be one long stroke going with the grain. I have no issues with getting a flat finish, not only because this sealer is really well, good at self-leveling, but if you use a light hand and a high quality synthetic brush, then you should be able to get a good finish. If you're not confident in that and you are refinishing, especially mid-century modern furniture, then I would suggest that you spray. I will end up doing a second coat on here, but I just wanted to show you guys how it self levels. There aren't a bunch of brush strokes in the top coat. But again, like I said, I will put a second coat on here after I lightly sand and I'll show you guys that later. But this is the top. You can see it is pretty beat up. It's pretty old. There's a lot of dirt, grime, stuff like that. So we're going to repeat the same process that we did on the body. We're gonna use a chemical stripper. We're gonna use our metal scraper to get any of that finish off. Because this is curved, I'm going to use that fine steel wool to get that stripper off and pull that pre-existing finish. The final step before we sand will be the mineral spirits. Again, I'm just gonna take the fine steel wool and go with the grain to get any of the residue off and that way we can neutralize this stripper. Right here, I am going to be using a walnut colored wood filler and to, then I can fill that little missing veneer right there. Now this I'm going to allow, I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to allow it to completely dry before we go in and we sand the top of this. But remember, we're going to start with a 120 grit, we're going to do a 180 grit, and then we're going to do a 220 grit. And I am also going to sand that the back of the top, that lip right there, I am going to sand that by hand because I do not want to damage it at all. And so a lot of times I sand things by hand when I'm refinishing it. I like to take a soft brush and get all of the dust off so that I can see where the pre-existing finish is still on this piece. Now, this piece had a lot of dents and scratches in it and I was able to get most of them out. But remember, this is a veneer and we have to be very careful. So you see those darker areas? Those are dents and that pre-existing finish is still on those dents and we need to pull them up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a damp rag and we're iron with it's the iron is going to be on the highest setting and you're going to move that iron around over where the dents are and what that's going to do is it's going to pull up those dents so that way we can go in with our sandpaper and or sander and we can get those areas where the pre-existing finish was and we can fix those scratches sometimes what people try to do is they try to sand those out and then you blow through your veneer so you do not want to do that you can use this technique also on a piece that has a finish on it just be very careful 
And this technique will help get dents and things out of your furniture. So you're gonna be careful, you're going to take that damp rag and you're gonna move it around. You're not gonna keep it in one spot. You're gonna go in circles, go back and forth. And again, that, what it's gonna do is it's going to pull that up, but it's also gonna raise your wood grain. So that is another reason why you need to sand afterwards so that you can smooth that wood grain back down like it was so that everything is even. But I'm gonna take this outside once it is completely dry and I'm going to sand over those areas because now they have been raised. So now my sander will be able to get to those areas where there are the pre-existing finish and then everything will be sanded in that way. When I stain it, it's going to be smooth. Everything's gonna be even, and then there won't be dents and scratches in this veneer. Once I'm done, I take a tacked cloth, and that is going to be a cloth that's kind of sticky, and it's gonna get all of my dust off of the piece before I go in with my stain. So again, I'm using Walnut by Ligno Color. It's a water-based stain and you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna go with the grain, but you're gonna see what I was talking about, how it lightens up a little bit once it starts drying. Once you put your top coat on there, it's going to darken back up. You can see right here where there's some areas that are starting to dry and they're lighter and some areas are still wet. Again, just let it completely dry and then you're gonna go in with whatever your top coat is. So for this, I am using a Klingon block brush and I am using, again, the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel Top Coat in Satin and I'm gonna go with the grain and I'm going to do long strokes and make sure that I don't overwork it but again, you wanna stay with the grain, just do long strokes and then allow it to self level. And that way you will get a nice smooth finish. This clip I'm about to show you is actually a seven minute time-lapsed video clip. So you can see right here how it self levels. So from the very beginning to the end, you can see how it starts to dry and it levels everything out and it has a really nice finish. Again, I'm going to do a second coat on here, but I'm also gonna do something that I need to seal. So I'm taking a very, very high grit sandpaper, just going over it really quick. I'm gonna take a tack cloth again and get all of that off. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a dark walnut and what this is, is this a resin based paint that helps fill in cracks and scratches and stuff. And I'm going to take a damp cloth so I can see that area and what it's gonna look like when it's got the second coat of sealer on there. And I'm gonna take an artist brush and I am going to create wood grain on here. That's where I filled that veneer that was missing. So I am just going to paint a wood grain on here and I'm going to I'm taking my finger so I can lighten it up a little bit. But there are areas where it's darker. And then I'm going to allow it to completely dry and I'm going to put my second coat of the Wise Owl 1 Hour enamel on there and then it is going to all just go together and if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't know. Thank you. 
This drawer front had been repaired before and you can see the nails in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is set these nails so that they sit further back. And then I'm going to remove the finish on here and I'm going to show you how we're going to fill these holes so that way everything matches each other. So I am taking a nail set and I'm just gently setting those nails that someone used to repair this drawer. And then we're going to remove the finish off of here. My assumption is that the person who put the nails in the drawer before didn't know how to fix them. So I'm going to show you right here on this drawer. It is like a puzzle piece. So you have to put the front on first because what happens is, is that the tongue and groove that's on here is going to slide. That would slide into the side. And then this side piece right here, that actually just sits right on top like a puzzle piece. So you can't put the side on first and then put the front on first. You have to do it in order. So that way everything kind of locks together. And so I think that that probably, I mean, I'm just assuming maybe they knew that, but you don't need to put nails in here. So I'm putting wood glue, I'm using a rubber mallet and I have put it together like a puzzle piece. Then I'm gonna remove all of the wood glue on here and I'm going to clamp it so that way we get it nice and tight and then we're gonna allow it to dry before we take those clamps off and then we have fixed it. This tongue and groove is meant to hold this piece together with glue. It doesn't need a bunch of nails, but this one had nails in it. So I'm taking wood glue and I'm gonna fill those holes and then I'm gonna take some sawdust and I'm going to push it into those holes. This sawdust is from me actually actually sanding the front of this drawer. So this is sawdust that came from this walnut veneer. So it's already going to match it. Then what I'm going to do is allow it to completely dry, go over it with a 220 grit, and then I'm going to stain it and it's all going to match. I am taking a silver gilding wax and I am just kind of refreshing this hardware because this is a hardware that we cannot boil and refresh. We're just going to refresh it with some oil based gilding wax and then everything will kind of go together. Okay, everybody, this video is done. This piece is done. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do. I don't do a lot of restoration videos, but there are some really great tips and tricks in there. And here is the piece. It looks super, super nice. I cannot wait for you guys to see all the staged pictures and see how we fix this drawer and you can no longer see where there were the nails. And then over here, there was that chunk taken out and it just has a really nice sheen to it. I really enjoy using Wise Owl's one hour enamel top coat. I think it's something that's really great and you don't have to worry about it cure, taking forever to cure. So it does cure super fast. This is crooked. The camera. You know what? The camera's crooked and you're gonna just have to deal with it. Anyways, guys, until next time, have an amazing weekend. Happy creating and I'll see you guys later. Bye.